Let's get nuts. <laughs> Well, hello, children. What's happening, guys? Let's get nuts. How's everybody doing today? Welcome to Film Chunky Live on your yep, September 14th. Man, we're already halfway through. We're already halfway through. We're halfway through September right now. Oh, thank God. The heat wave no longer around when it comes to Southern California. Well, it's still kind of warm, but it's just not as bad as it's been. That's for damn sure. How's everybody doing tonight? Make sure you guys uh, smash that like thumbs up. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. You know, hit that notification bell like I uh, do right here. If you want to become a member, become a member. Join the Film Junkie family. We do a post show after every Wednesday show. So after this show, we'll do a post show stream. You guys can pick my brain a little bit, you know, afterwards if you want to do that. So, yeah, please do so. Follow me all the sock mids up there, the Patreon. Trying to give as much exclusive stuff right there. All right. Nice thumbnail, right? Thank you, Phil. David W., you have a lot of things that you just wrote right now. All right. Well, I'm not going to read all that because that's a lot. Something tells me that um, maybe, uh, I don't know. I'm not going to read all that. <laughs> What's going on, Jay? Uh, is now an enemy? Well, he's an enemy to some, you know, some. The min minority of the fandom, at least. The vocal minority, mostly, so... Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. So, uh, just sit back and watch the fireworks, pal. No point uh, getting your feelings uh, in twists at all. It's, uh, yeah, JN. Are you talking about, yeah, there's nothing. I'll leave it just to, okay. Are you talking to Jay Leva? Hi, Miss Steph, Miss Nighthawk. Always good to see you. Uh, we got Tony Movie Chappy D9 Bl Neil Blomkamp fan. Hey, Dave, just rewatching The Incredible Hulk, which is the most underrated MCU movie. Man, yeah, it's still good. Jay Leva's daddy, that's right. What's going on, Mr. Fear Jason? Always good to see you. Yes, he, he does not deserve the flack. He definitely does. I don't know why you're... Okay, yeah, he does not deserve the flack. I don't know why your profile picture is not showing up right there. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Okay, I have never muted so many people. Yeah, I mean, if you needed people to mute... It's <laughs> it's funny, too, because there's some people that had me blocked that I couldn't see, like, uh, certain things when it came to the last three days, that's for sure. What's going on, Ryan? We got Jesse right here. What's going on, Mr. Venom? That's right. Yo, what's going on, Jose? Slay Leva's gang, and it's pathetic how these so-called fans are attacking him. But then again, no one, yeah, not a bit of surprise, really. Not at all, right? Eric Patterson, what's going on? We got Nate right here. It's sad. They're talking about Jay Leva being fought with has uh, to be a top. I know it was a slow news day. I really didn't want it to be like uh, I didn't really want it to be the main topic. But I mean, I knew we were going to talk about it again. We've been talking about it all week because it's been it's like day three of this right now. So it was kind of like just like, uh, thank you. New subscriber right there. All right. Um, but, uh, you know, but there was just there was like not much that was happening today. So I was like, all right, I guess, uh, you know, he said some really good things, some interesting things today. That actually, you know, was like warranted of like that. So that's good. So we'll talk about all that. Stephanie T, how you doing? That's right. Hashtag full frontal. F uh, well, you know, still hope for the. Uh, well, yeah, it could be too, right? Uh, but anyways, what's going on, Berlin? JD McRae, what's going on? We got video game aholic. Good to see ya. All right, we got Miss Cat right here. Always good to see ya. Happy Hump Day. Happy Hump Day. Yeah. Well, you said Phil. <laughs> so. Always good. Let's see. We got uh, Mr. Eric. Are there pe still people insisting that if we all boycotted, we'd, uh, yeah, there's always going to be people that think that the, you know, things are bigger than they actually are, you know. So we got Carrie right here as well. There you go. Hi, Dave. We got Miss Rhea right here as well. We're saying hi to everybody. So we all good. Everybody's all good. Let the Snyder Cut go, my guy. Um, are you talking to me? What do you, uh, I don't know if you're talking about me. Let the Snyder Cut go. All right. I I I I actually like to hold it. It's right there. It's, I got a, I got a physical copy. So I don't I'm not gonna I don't want to let it go. You know I could I could watch it wherever. You know. So I don't know what's going on with that. Ah, uh, Mr. Everts is also here. What's up, sir? And Mr. Legend also. I don't think I said hi to you. All right, guys. Yes. Let's talk. I even poured a little bit of a of a drinky today. So cheers. Hmm. Ah, so, 
Yeah, hopefully you guys are uh, doing good. Like I said, we're going to be talking about these topics. Like I said, it was pretty scarce. Um, we're going to be talking about a, another kind of Joker movie that just kind of came out of nowhere. Pretty interesting little topic. Um, and then, of course, we've got something with The Flash and then The the Avengers, uh, The Kang Dynasty got, got itself a writer. But yeah, we're going to be talking about Mr. Slay Oliva. Slay Oliva. That's going to be uh, the main topic here. So, alrighty then. So... Here we go. Let me go ahead. Hey, look at that. Another subscriber. We're getting some subscribers on this stream right now. That's for sure. Always good to see. Join in the family. Let's, uh, you know, it's always nice to see all that. All right, guys. Let's see. Let me make sure that's on. All right. Let's get to these tweets. And let's get to them. Turn that off. <clears throat> all right. Whoop. There we go. Sorry. Here we go. Get to the tweets. Whoa. Forgot to change the uh, the certain little whatchamacallit, but it's fine. Um, this is really cool right here. Okay, so Zack Snyder is just doing some awesome stuff right here when it comes to Rebel Moon. And uh, we already saw one of these before. We already saw. We already saw like him do, you know, obviously we know that he is the uh, director of photography, the cinematographer of Rebel Moon. So director, cinematographer, doing all this stuff. The man is in the trenches. He's not sitting in a chair looking at monitors you know, about a, a half a mile away. Nah, he's in the trenches. He's crouched down with the camera, getting, you know, explosions on him and everything. This is why he's the man. He's the goat. Mr. Zack Snyder, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this shot right here. Boom. <laughs> what's happening in this shot oh yep and then you gotta do it you gotta do it gotta do it gotta make sure you gotta get that shot something's happening we got some green screen we got an actor right there i'm not sure what's going on holding on to something and we got we got somebody with the boom mic back there that's right get that shot zach get that shot so cool so freaking cool yep Ah, I don't know. That's I don't. Eh, I don't know. I don't think it's Hunnam. I don't think it's Hunnam, right? That's not Hunnam right there. I don't know who that is. I don't know. But anyways, really cool shot. But I just love it. I love when we get these uh, behind the scenes shots right here. That Zach, of course, obviously they set up the camera and just you know kind of showing how the sausage is made, and it's really fantastic. So another uh, great behind the scenes uh, footage for um, for Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon. Um, I'm a watch guy. I kind of want. I kind of want this watch. I'm not gonna lie. You know, with the battery sticking out like that. You know, so kind of cool. Kind of cool. I don't know. Something kind of cool about it. So, uh, anyways, and then um, let's see. Uh, oh yeah. By the way, there's uh, apparently there's more things that are happening when it comes to Batman Gate. Remember the Batman Gate? I did a video on it. If you haven't seen it yet, just type it in on my channel. Look for it. Uh, the Batman Gate. I did something about you know, Mr. Chris Wozniak talking about uh, how his uh, idea from over 30 years ago was stolen by Matt Reeves and everything. And uh, you know, I retweeted this right here from Mr. Uh, Alex Lobo, who uh, you know, who's very well versed when it comes to this kind of stuff. And um, yeah, things are still kind of happening because apparently uh, he submitted something for copyright. So things are not have not ended when it comes to the Batman. I'm surprised that he didn't respond to my video because the dude actually follows me. I don't know if he still follows me, but when I posted the video, I was like, oh, yeah, he does follow me. But uh, Mr. Lobo right here, you know, he just kind of said uh, the issue he faces is whether his uh, derivative work was co copyrightable elements that is substantial and bear his personality to be original. So far, what Wozniak has presented are elements to a story that has been told in other Batman media that are not original. So there you go. I mean, you're hearing from somebody who's within that world, the law and copyright, very well versed, talking about that. Yes, Wozniak really still does not have a case when it comes to his Batman story. So just saying. But hey, he could keep trying. Hey, we got some more images of uh, Mr. Tyler Hecklin right there. So we can actually see more of the texture of the uh, of the Superman costume, which a lot of people... Uh, up close, it doesn't look as good as it did from far away. The boots, again, still look, need a little bit of... Uh, 
you know, whatever. But, you know, it's still an improvement from the previous costumes, at least so. And then Mr. Ben Everts right here, he uh, he tapped into the mid-journey AI. And uh, remember when Darren Aronofsky was going to do a Batman Year One with uh, Joaquin Phoenix as Batman? Well, he typed it in. That came out right there, which looks very interesting. Very interesting right there, so... I like it. Anyways, uh, Brightburns 1985. Thank you for the two dollar super chat. Golden Eye is coming to Switch, and uh, I, yeah, I talked about it last night. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, I wouldn't mind getting into some Golden Eye stuff, you know? That I fucking played that game like crazy. What's going on, Anthony? Good to see you, bud. Always good to see you. Is the thing not popping up? All right, I guess not. The super chat thing not popping up. Is it really delayed? Probably. There it is. Okay. Uh, Benedict Wong on the social media reaction to the Wong Cinematic Universe. Here's his quote right here. He says, the Marvel fans have have kind of warmed to me. I'm grateful for that. I take my work very seriously in terms of acting, but I really enjoy having a ball in this universe. That's right. We're all about the Wong Cinematic Universe, man. Even if you don't like things that are happening in movies that he's in, at least we can like him. And, you know, we, we like uh, the Wong Cinematic Universe right there. And then here we go. Look at this right here, guys. Violent Night. Oh, we got another uh, dark action um, Santa Claus movie coming out. Remember like uh, almost two years ago when Fat Man came out with Mel Gibson? I actually had the directors on to talk about it, which, uh, you know, was great. And uh, I would love to talk to them again. I know they were trying to get sequels and whatnot going, but apparently we have a new one. It's going to be called Violent Night. That's going to be starring Mr. David Harbour as Santa as Santa Claus. When a group of mercenaries attack the estate of a wealthy family, Santa Claus must step in to save the day. Look at that poster right there. That's right. He's got a candy cane that has that's lit up. I don't know if uh, maybe he's smoking something out of that candy cane. I don't know. But uh, you better watch out. Violent Night. I'm actually kind of curious about this. When is the trailer coming out? Show me, please. So that was like showing up today. That was pretty interesting. Happy birthday to Sam Neill. Of course, Mr. Dr. Grant. And we've loved him in various other things. Uh, Omen uh, Omen Part 3, I want to say. I don't know. Yeah. But Event Horizon, you know, a lot of things right there. So um, Mr. Baz Luhrmann uh, discusses the four-hour extended cut of the Elvis movie, saying it could be released one day. But I don't um, but I don't close my mind to the idea that there would be an extended cut, but not now. I'm a little bit on the tired side. So, yeah, he put a lot into this Elvis movie. Obviously, it paid off because this movie is going to get nominated for awards like crazy. There's a lot of people that are just praising the absolute shiza out of it. And uh, I still haven't watched it again. I watched like the first like 20 minutes again uh, at my mom's house uh, because she loves the movie. And uh yeah, I mean, it's a great fucking movie, and a uh, four-hour cut, I don't know if that's going to, like, if that would be something where, because, you know, it's very quick, I'm just kind of wondering if a four-hour cut, would it be slowed down big time, and, it, and it, it, is it needed? I don't know. I don't know. It seems like the original movie just, like, you know, flies pretty good, flies pretty good, so... Hey, we got a little shot right here. Some Court of Owls action going on with the Gotham Knights right here. Video game. Like it. Like it. All right. And uh, Ray Porter deleted a tweet. <laughs> I think we can all... I think we all know what the tweet was. But he deleted it. So I'm not going to say what it kind of... Uh, well, kind of confirmed. I'm just going to leave it at that. Because, you know, maybe he was a little worried that maybe he shouldn't have uh, responded to somebody else's tweet, you know, and I, you know, and I love Ray. The guy's awesome. I can't wait to get him back on the Vodka stream and have another chat with him because he's just got a heart of gold. But I'm not going to say what it basically was like confirming, (laughs) you know, Uh, what did he tweet? No, it was a response tweet to something, you know, so, yeah. But I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it because if he deleted the tweet, I'm just going to go, all right, whenever it's, uh, you know, (laughs) somebody's going to say it in the chat probably. But I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that. But, Ray, oh, can't wait. Can't wait. Really can't wait. Yep. So there you go. 
Anyway, so, uh, and then we got right here, speaking of David Harbour, he's going to be in the Gran Turismo movie that's going to be directed by Neil Blomkamp. That's right. D9 Chappie Neil Blomkamp fan, you know. Hey, Mr. Scott McClellan, he's there, he's there, he's there. Uh, so there we go. And then we got uh, Mr. Uh, Matson Tomlin, um, who's going to be, you know, of course, doing, you know, Batman 2, Project, pa- he did Project Power. He, uh, he's going to have his own little run of a uh, little with uh, Lee Barmijo right here. Goes back to the comics, teaming with Lee Barmijo for Vicious Cycle, an original three-issue prestige miniseries from Boom! Time travel assassins are the characters. Amazing is the art. I mean, give me some Lee Barmijo art. That's all I need right there. But the uh, time travel assassins sound pretty freaking awesome. So looking forward to that. Uh, Matt Ferguson. Uh, it's got some posters right here of the Batman, which look really, really good. Look really, really good. So, yeah. Anyways, I'm not a puss. I'm just respecting Dark Side. Dark Side. I'm just respecting Dark Side. That's all. Is it so wrong to respect Dark Side? Uh, this is pretty funny right here that Ben posted. He posted this right here. Somebody made an awesome little fucking video right here when it came to. Uh, when it came to uh, Avengers Endgame, it had like all these different clips and all these different. I don't know. I, again, the Internet just wins. The Internet just wins. You got Avatar. You got all kinds of things that are happening that they just splice into. You got the Batwing right there from Batman 89 <laughs> that are just like joining the fight. It's so freaking good. Look at that. I mean, some Lord of the Rings stuff. You got Abomination. You got all kinds of things. You got see. <laughs> <laughs> is Star Wars are in there? I mean, you watch this thing. It, it's crazy. You got fucking... Look, you got the T-1000. You got Halo people. I mean, it's just... Whoever made this, it, it's just amazing. It's amazing. The internet just wins. Look at that. You even got some Green Lanterns in there and stuff. <laughs> and some <laughs> Titans and... Ah, you got Jack Sparrow. All this stuff. Just really good. Han Solo. Such a good video right there. And such a clean little gif right there, too. Hey, look at this. Disney chief Bob Chapek Chapek sees clear path for Hulu to merge with Disney Plus once Comcast buyout is complete. So, yes, guys, eventually Hulu and Disney Plus are going to merge. I know it's weird. I'm sure they'll keep the Hulu name because it's really made a big name for itself. But, uh, yeah, expect that to happen. Expect it to happen. Just saying. And also just saying, too, we're going to be talking about Jay Leva. I'm listening to Lane right here. Open invitation for Jay Oliva to join the vodka stream, to come on the vodka stream. Uh, if he wants to pour himself a drink, I don't know what Jay Oliva would drink, or if he's not a drinker, that's perfectly fine too. But Jay Oliva, in- open invitation for the vodka stream to come on, have a chat, you know, especially with things that are happening now. But also, I would love to just, you know, pick your brain when it comes to a lot of this stuff. We've seen Jay Oliva be be interviewed on the Justice Cons. And, uh, you know, he's just a, a man of a lot of words. And I would just listen to him for hours, hours and hours. So if that happens, like I said, guys, hey, blow it up, blow it up. A lot of people have been blowing it up on Twitter. Blow it up, you know, blow up this tweet, blow up. The, you know, hey, I'd like to see him on the vodka stream. It'd be great. Be great to get Jay Leva on this thing and uh, pick his brain a little bit. It would be. It would be. So, hopefully that could happen. That could possibly happen. I've been wanting to get that, but I know he's. You know, he doesn't really do much interviews. I mean, main, mainly he's done Justice Con stuff, which is fine. You know, that was for a good cause, of course. But uh, yeah, would love to pick his brain and have him on there. So. Uh, hey, Mama Film Junkies here. Hey, we got Mick D here, too. We got everybody. Hey, the whole gang is here. What's happening, guys? All right. So let's talk about Mr. Slay Oliva right here. It's been uh, it's been three. We're on day three now. <laughs> you know, we're on day three because, you know, he uh, posted, basically quote tweeted uh, Gail Simone and, uh, and uh, you, know, pr- you know, basically talking about something. That's pretty much where it all started. And then the Snyder fandom, or well, a certain side of the Snyder fandom decided to swarm in and being like, no, no, you can't do that. You can't do that, Jay. You, we are saying you cannot even be friends with Gail because she was mean. She was mean to us, so you can't. And uh, that's where this whole, whole thing started. And, and Aliva just kind of just went, you know what? I've been seeing too much of this on my timeline, too much of this uh, this fringe side that just kind of dog piles and just throws shade and, and toxic. So he decided he was just going to be like, you know what? I'm just going to go and push back against these guys. 
because this is bullshit. This is bullshit. So that's what he's basically been doing for uh, the past um, couple of days, past couple of days. And we've been talking about it, but we're going to talk about some of the stuff that um, that he posted today, which I thought was pretty interesting. Some interesting things that were uh, posted. So here we go right here. So first off, he was responding to somebody right here. When it came when it came to obviously you kept going back and forth between this person right here. Do you realize all I see on my feed is the vocal minority giving us all bad names? If you can't clean up the image, then how else do you expect the narrative to change? I started to I started defending the movement five years ago and I kept at it, even though I was disregarded and not believed. That's right. He was always a believer. But I love this tweet right here where he says, just because it seems impossible doesn't mean you don't try. So you'd rather attack people who call us names than attack the people inherent within our fandom. Seriously, that is insane. He's just trying to make it seem like, hey, guys, we don't always any any time that somebody's going to make a stink about, you know, people, you know, the fandom or something like that. Do we have to dogpile on that? No, because all they're doing, those people are just jealous. The fact that we got that W again, it's all about that W. You always got to think about the W that we have. The fact that I have a physical copy of Zack Snyder's Justice League right there will always remind me that we had the biggest W ever. We made fucking history, absolute history. Okay, we absolutely made history. Yeah, you can make jokes at some people. You know, let's make the jokes. But we, you know, and men make maybe make a jab if they make a jab. Okay, cool. That's fine. But when the constant dogpiling, you know, and it's always from that same side and it's always the same stuff, that's where we we can't that's where we don't do that. You say I'm def- and then he even said right here, you say I'm defending people who are trolling when all I said was Gail will sometimes post things to get a rise out of people. Now, when she called the vocal minority Ro- Russian bots, could it be possible that it was because they are acting like Russian bots? Ooh, slay Oliva right there. It's always something. Always something you gotta love right there. So really like that. It was just Kind of funny, you know. I'm not going to go through every little tweet because, my God. Yeah, you have people right here, like, saying he's gaslighting. Gaslighting! That's just not good. He's definitely not gaslighting. He's just saying it like it is. Uh, You know, saying stuff like, What lies? That we are toxic? That we attack people for not liking Zach's films? Is that what you want to change? The answer to the change is the narrative and clean up our image. The vocal minority has ruined our rep. That's the truth. That's the truth, he says. And this man is, of course, you know, he's he's within the biz. He's within the biz, of course. It's gotten worse. Of course, he's talked about that. It's gotten worse. You do realize uh, she's been hounded by so-called Snyder fans for years, right? Everyone seems to think that all of a sudden she's bashing the fandom. Seriously, think about it and understand that you don't see the whole picture. She called out the toxic element of our fandom. So he says stuff like that. This is another good tweet right here. Um, okay, so this is one of the one of those basically. Hey, exclusive, exclusive. Are we getting another confirmation that Zach has not met with WBD or David Zaslav from Mr. Uh, J. Olivo right here? They aren't going to invite Zach back unless they see a clear financial gain. Zach isn't going to come back unless they make him a really great offer after the way he was treated with the old regime. It's all a, it's all business, and our rep as a fandom will keep that from happening. Wow. Mike fucking drop right there. But yes... I mean, again, I already know that, uh, you know, the scoopsy daisies over on the other side are going to push back against this. What does Jay Oliva know? Huh? What does Jay Oliva know? It's like, well, I think he knows a lot more than you. And that's what's just another thing where it's like, oh, yeah, he basically just confirmed yet again that, yes, it hasn't happened yet. Zach is over here making all this stuff. And, yes, he will not come back unless it is a sweet offer. And then they can mend the fences and then we can get some more Zach Snyder, Snyderverse, all that stuff, which could still happen. It's not out of the realm of possibilities. Not. Jay Leva is just saying it like it is right here. He's saying he isn't going to come back unless they make him a great offer, which means full-on control, full control, 100% control. Don't fuck with my shit. 
basically. Full control, and then of course he gets, you know, that's pretty much what it's gonna be. Sweet offer, full control, full creative control. So if they're willing to do that, then guess what? We will get some more Snyderverse from the man himself. Like five years from now, possibly. I don't know, four or five, you know, maybe, whatever. But there you go. <sighs> Anyways, it's just, it's just like, oh, geez, just uh, uh, official again. I'm going to listen to Jay Oliva. I'm going to listen to the boys from TPZ when they say that there hasn't been conversations with WBD. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <clears throat> and yeah, he keeps going like this. You got people like here that saying I'm, I'm sick to my stomach reading this, you know? Some people are just like, they're getting a reality check, and then, of course, they're just going to turn on Jay Oliva because what does he know? You know, it's that, it's that anti-Snyder rhetoric, right? That anti-Snyder rhetoric. Ah. Uh, and he's just kind of saying things like, no worries, this whole thing is exhausting, and I'm, cr I'm in a cranky mood as it is. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, that's why he's slaying. He's slaying. And then I love this right here. Somebody said, like, uh, you know, Jay Oliva is a legend of the Snyder fandom. I disagree with him, but I will continue to respect and admire him because a disagreement does not make us moral enemies. The movement is dead. Bury it. And I love his response right here. And I actually like that tweet because the guy was like, hey, I disagree with him, but I respect the man. I still respect him full on 100 percent, which is the way that civilized human beings should be about everything. Hey, I disagree with you, but... I still have some respect, you know, and stuff like that with some of the work and blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to just cancel you out because you said certain things that I don't like. And I like his response right here. The movement isn't dead. It stood for something that is still relevant today. AFSP, suicide prevention. That is number one, number one right there. If we want it to mean something moving forward, it's going to take a lot of work from all of us. So that's good. That's good, and don't even look at that tweet. That tweet is gross. I don't even want to post. I don't want that in my video. There's somebody posted something, a screenshot. It's a gross tweet. Don't even, ugh, ugh. And that's, 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 it was horrible. It was horrible. And he said, yes, that person is trying to get attention. Fuck that person, pretty much. Ugh, man. So, uh, but yeah, he's just been going on, and, uh, Let's see right here. It says, absolute facts. Jay is a hell of a guy. This is a good tweet right here. By the way, how can I survive a zombie uh, infection if I were in Las Vegas? And can you give me uh, ideas how the scenario will be? So kind of just like, hey, man, Jay, give us some hints on Las Vegas, please. Las Vegas. Uh, what if I, um, and this person said, but what if I, uh, by then, uh, a zombie already bites me? You should never be in a situation where someone can bite you unless you're into that sort of stuff. <laughs> and then, yeah, he even responded to Gail Simone again. I really like you people. And he said, ha ha, we like you too. So don't be offended by it. Don't be offended by it. He even responded to Ben right here. Look at that. So that's pretty cool. And then this is right here. Uh, another uh, one that I retweeted. He said, 100% of the fandom worked hard to get the film released. There's a small vocal minority that's undermining what we accomplished by being toxic. I have eyes and ears, you know, and it's not from my friends I'm hearing it from. Do you realize I work in Hollywood, right? So basically he's saying like, yes, that he's hearing this, that he's also hearing it over there, like in the outside world. That's what he was trying to talk about. Like, hey, guys, this is not just Twitter that this is happening. It's spilling into the outside world. So it's a lot of that stuff. Uh, we got Mr. Clue there. Yeah, there's a lot of things in here. Like I said, I wasn't going to go over every little bit of it. Yeah, man, go and twist my words. Go ahead and spout out uh, your ass to your your fan poser. Calling people fan posers and everything like that. Yeah, and people are leaving. Yeah, saying leaving him alone and stuff like that. It's been great. He's been muting people. What are you talking about? I'm not agreeing with the hit pieces. But let's be honest here. The Phantom has gotten a bad rep lately. I'm... Hell, I'm getting people attacking me now. How effed up is that? So, yeah, you got all kinds of stuff right there, Hollywood. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. Spit take. But there you go. And then uh, then we got the, the tweet right there. So there you go. That's what's That was pretty much what was happening today. So basically what I was taking from today when it came to uh, Jay Oliva, the Jay Oliva tour, day three. 
uh, Slay Oliva. It's the fact that, yeah, he's still kind of pushing back and just kind of going like, hey, guys, you know what? I, we He gets it. He gets the fact that there's been a lot of uh, shit thrown to the movement and through the fandom uh, for the last five years or whatever the fuck. Um, but he's always been a loyal fan. Obviously, him and Zach work well together. They're good friends. They love all, you know, they love working together. Can't wait to see Las Vegas and, of course, the Norse God stuff that's happening on Netflix. Cannot wait. Hopefully, we get a little something when it comes to that. But he's just basically going like, hey, but you realize that this vocal minority is like really just kind of, you know, it's it, it it's shitting all over the whole thing because that's what a lot of people are focusing on. It's like, hey, if we just pump the brakes with that, obviously every fandom is still going to have it. There's not everybody's just going to stop instantly. But, but uh, you know, but he's just trying to be like, hey, can we pump the brakes? This is what's happening. This is what I'm hearing, not just on Twitter. Yes, I see it on my Twitter feed, but now I'm hearing it, you know, within real reality. Okay, if you want more Snyderverse, guess what? You need to like start relaxing a little bit on the dog piling just because people say some certain things. It's like just make the jokes. Again, when it came to the Russian bots thing, a lot of people just made the jokes, but there are people that took serious offense, and it's like don't do that. Please don't do that. Okay? It's really not that serious, especially when you think about the whole 13% or anything like that. And then of course, I like the fact that he basically put it out there that hey, you know, if you want this thing to continue, guess what? Well, Zach's not going to be coming back unless he's going to get a pretty sweet offer, which the number one thing is going to be 100% creative control. So which means, of course, that again confirms the fact that, yes, that there was not there has not been meetings between WBD and Zach. There has not. OK, he's very much been busy. Obviously, we saw that beautiful behind the scenes footage of him. Behind the camera, Rebel Moon, taking the explosion right there, just right in the trenches, doing all that stuff. But yes, that hasn't happened. But could it happen? Absolutely. Absolutely could happen. Jay's just trying to put it out there like, hey, let's uh, clean up the act a little bit. Let's, uh, let's, let's take a step back. We don't need to jump on everybody who hates on shit. We don't need to... I, there, are, there are accounts that I had to mute myself that just could not stop shitting on the Batman. Could not stop shitting on the Batman because that's not their Batman. Not my Batman. Remember? Remember the whole thing? You know? And then, of course, you could just take that line from Harvey Dent. You either, uh, you either die a hero or live long enough to be, become the villain. That's what a lot of these guys have turned into. It's like we all kind of band together, got this thing out because we, we liked... We loved what Zack Snyder was doing with these characters. We got all that out there, and it was great. It was 100%. We got it all out there. It's good. But then all of a sudden, when other people started coming in because things did change, then it was like, oh, then all of a sudden they become the villain. I mean, there was people that... there's I don't know how many times that I had guys in my mentions that were just always shitting on the Batman when they, of course, um, you look at their profile and you see hashtag restore the Snyderverse and blah, 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 and it's like... What are you doing? Why are you constantly doing this? And you look at their profile and they're just constantly shitting on somebody else's work. It's constantly doing that. It's like, why? What? How does that help anything? Okay. Have we not learned nothing? Have we not learned nothing in the past five, six, seven years when it came to this stuff? Have we not learned anything? It's like, remember, you were defending all this. Now there's something different that's out there from somebody different that people like, and you're just attacking them or you're shitting on them. You're climbing in their mentions, saying how it's all awful and everything like that. It's just that's the kind of stuff that he's trying to bring to light right here that a lot of us have trying to bring, trying to, bring to light when it comes to this. Don't take offense to it. It sucks. If you're not one of these people, guess what? It's not about you. But when I see people in my mentions going like, well, it's not right, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, that just makes me seem like you've done, you've been part of the dog piles. You've kind of been part of this whole thing. That's why you're kind of going like, what the hell, man? It's like, no, don't be those people. I mean, if it's not you, it's not you. It's not, again, it's not like he's taking the whole general thing. Yes, they do that when it comes to these hit pieces. Just make fun of it. That's what we do. Anytime these hit pieces have been coming out with the Russian bots and whatever the fuck, we have all just, you know, just make your jokes and just be like, <laughs> and again, as you're making the joke, hold on to your physical copy of the Snyder Cut. Just hold it. Hold it. Hold it up to your face. Take a selfie with it. Okay? Sleep with it. Pretend it's a teddy bear. Okay, because that's the ultimate W you have right there. You have a physical copy of the four-hour fucking Snyder Cut. It's all you need. All you need right there to push back against those haters. It's all you need. <sighs> Cheers. 
Ugh. Anyways, so there you go. Jay Lee was the man, and like I said, he's always welcome. He's welcome to come on the vodka stream. Anyways, <laughs> and donate to AFSP, like Jacob said. Ah, and hopefully, yes, we can release the air cut because even even Jay Oliva said that. Even Jay Oliva said that too. He even said that himself. He goes, he didn't work on the project, but he one hundred percent he one hundred percent supports releasing of the air cut. That was part of the threads too. Like I said, he was responding to a lot of people. I didn't want to go over every single thing, but yeah, he even supports the air cut. It's just. When it came to the when it came to the Snyder stuff, he had storyboards he could put out there, you know? He didn't have storyboards for the air cut, but praise that man. Love that man. Love him. All right. So let's uh veer off uh from that and talk about uh the people's joker. Have you guys heard about this? Have you guys heard about this? This is something random that um that came about. That really came about and I first saw this right here, and I had no idea what was going on when it came to this, but something that happened at Toronto Film Festival, apparently somebody has a film that kind of takes a different approach when it comes to, I guess, almost Todd Phillips' Joker to a, uh, a different, yeah, it's a different approach. So here it is right here, The People's Joker pulled from TIFF over rights issue. Vera Drew has removed her, uh, her film from The People's Joker from the Toronto Film Festival per Fest organizers. The filmmaker has withdrawn the film due to rights issues. A statement posted on the uh, the website. We apologize for the inconvenience, any inconvenience, all that stuff. Warner did not respond to the comment. It's likely that the studio was protecting its DCIP, as is the standard with copyright protection. Drew, who wrote, directed, and stars in a film inspired by DC characters, first hinted at the People's Joker development in a message uh, to her Twitter on Tuesday. I have no clue how today goes, and my team wants me to say nothing, of course, so I'll stay vague. But whatever happens in the next few hours, I want you to know, if you've been waiting and aching to watch our movie, you're going to get it too soon. Stay tuned and stay with me. Need your help. In The People's Joker, an inspiring clown, Drew, grappling with her gender identity, combats a fascistic caped crusader. That's right. So that's the uh, initial plot right there. UTA is repping rights to the film, which debuted on Tuesday as part of TIFF's Midnight Madness section, which further screenings had been planned. Those have now been canceled. So she basically said, uh, yeah. She was saying all that. And then there was a follow-up right here from uh, her that said... uh, well, first off, there's some people that were reviewing this and saying that, hey, this is actually kind of dark and kind of funny. So some people were actually reviewing it, saying it was fine. Not sure exactly how it's going to look. It's probably going to be, it's like very much, I mean, obviously, if you see images right here, that's what she looks like right there. There's another one right there, which very much is taken out of uh, Todd Phillips' Joker. So it almost seems like it's like a parody, almost a spoof type, but, you know. What can you do? But she says right here in an interview with Collider, Drew addresses the inherent legal issues with her rendition of the well-known character saying that the illegal tag of the film wasn't literal. The director and star cites fair use in copyright laws for the People's Joker, Joker's protectors and clarifies that the crew have done the work behind the scenes to ensure that the film's distribution is legal. Her quote right here says, I think the film can be 100% distributed It is completely protected under the fair use copyright law, like a parody law. The only thing that makes it weird in both of those categories is nobody's ever taken characters and IP and really personalized it in this way. So I think that's the thing that really kind of makes it seem a lot more dangerous than I actually think it is. I mean, I get it. Look, I put in in an illegal comic book movie on the poster, but that was to get your butts in the seats. There's literally no reason for anybody to worry, I think, about legal repercussions with this. Without getting into it, we've gone really far to ensure that we could do this. I probably wouldn't have spent two years of my life making an actual illegal Joker movie. So there you go. Very interesting. I'm kind of intrigued. I kind of want to see it. Um, It's just kind of funny, though, because 
Uh, you know, I've seen people, there are people out there that are being like, I think even people have even reached out to the Snyder fandom to be like, hey, can we get this movie released? Guys, people in the Snyderverse. I think I saw, you know, I saw some tweets like that that are kind of reaching out to this whole thing. And it's like, all right. I mean, obviously we all want the, uh, the artistic integrity. We want the creative stuff like that. It's just kind of funny though, because, you know, if they're kind of doing like a, a, a different kind of take on the whole Joker stuff, I'm like, man, remember all the backlash when it came to that Joker? Joker, it's just like, oh yeah, the incels are gonna rise up. We better beef up security in the uh, the theaters and stuff like that. I don't think it's gonna happen with this when it comes to you know somebody struggling with a gender ide- identity for sure. But I don't know. I'm intrigued though. I I, I wouldn't mind seeing it. I want to see what this is all about. I don't know if this is gonna go anywhere. If it's actually gonna get distributed. But hey, I'm gonna be. I, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. But you know. Just, uh, of course, there'll be backlash if it does get released by another group, you know, because we go back and forth with like, hey, that's not right. Hey, you know, we all do that stuff. But yeah, we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, if I hear anything, you know, or anything like that, hey, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of intrigued. We'll see what happens. <laughs> it's just like it just came out of nowhere, though. It was so uh, just random. But the People's Joker, maybe you have to ta- change the title to The People's Clown. Might have to do that. The people's clown. That might be just tweak things to try to avoid the copyright. That's one thing. The people's clown. Do it like that. Making suggestions. All right. Now we got the flash. So (laughs) this is a weird one. Like I said, slow movie day, guys. Very slow uh, day right here. And I saw this and I went, well, that's interesting. Um, that somebody actually recorded a video. I retweeted it earlier, and it's this guy right here. Um, let's see here. He put it on his Instagram, and you know, I and it's kind of funny because uh, <laughs> the Flash one is the uh, first official poster. Check it out. So this guy was like, uh, he posted this video right here, and and anybody who knows knows where this is from. But it is interesting that that, and this is not the first time this has happened too. But here it is right here. Here's a video. He's at a TS, uh, TCL right here. Yeah. So look at that poster right there. The Flash. So look at that right there. Does that look familiar to anybody? That does look familiar, right? Huh? Concept art for Justice League, anybody? Yeah. So apparently this, this uh, TCL theater right here has that rocking right there? Em primeira mão. <laughs> of course, yes, we've seen that before. We've seen that before. Some people even uh, like uh, underneath it was like, hey, yeah, obviously it's uh, concept art that we've seen before. But yeah, it's just kind of funny how, wow, like how, like, how, is that really being used right there? That really going to be used right there? The costume doesn't even look the same. And how great was that costume too, by the way? Pretty cool little costume that they that we saw because we all know that yeah there was supposed to be a second costume but then Zach was like hey I want the Flash director to uh, you know do the whole costume thing because Zach's that kind of guy but it was just kind of funny it was like I saw that video I'm like that looks familiar that looks like the concept art right there which you know I think that eventually Wilkinson was going to end up doing right there um, I forgot who who uh, designed those costumes right there. But that was all very much pre, that was like BVS days, pre and everything like that. But that's not the first time that's happened. I mean, when Spider-Man No Way Home was coming out, movie theaters had fan art. They had fan posters up on their goddamn, you know, hanging up on the walls. It's just very strange right there. It's like, yeah, there's not an official poster, but just have the logo, just have the logo. But then again, it doesn't pop as much. So why not just go on the internet, find something cool, and make yourself your own poster, I guess. I don't know. I just thought that was kind of cool, though. I thought that was kind of cool, so there it was, right there. The first poster for The Flash, spotted out in the wild. Not even correct, just concept art for, for Justice League, Zack Snyder's Justice League, to be exact. Okay, and then we have Avengers. The Kang Dynasty apparently has their writer. That's right, so Ant-Man... In the quant in quant in Quantum Mania, Ant Man and the Watson Quantum Mania better be good because apparently the writer of that is going to be the writer of the King Dynasty exclusive. Uh, Mr. Justin Crawl of Deadline said, "Avengers: The, the King Dynasty." Jeff Loveness, that's quite a name. I'm probably saying it wrong. It's probably like Loveness or something like that. Loveness 
tap to write next installment in the Marvel series. After announcing that, the Avengers came down to say, blah, 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 blah. Yes, Jeff Lewis has recently wrote Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania will pen Avengers the Kang Dynasty for Marvel. Lewis will join Dust, uh, Destin Daniel Cretton, who was recently set as director on the project with Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige producing. Of course he's producing. Why do you have to add that in there? You got to fill up an article. I get it. I get it. You got to fill up. got to put a lot of words in those articles. So you got to put names and words and everything. Make sure that it at least has some kind of length when it comes to that. But there you go. So apparently uh, the Ant-Man and Quantumania is going to be joining and uh, writing that. Even though we all know that uh, he's not going to be the only writer. I mean, the producers and a lot of other people right there are going to be writing it too, right? <laughs> because it's Disney. <laughs> Just saying. We know it's true. You know it's true. I mean, come on. They, you know, There's a lot of ideas that get thrown into these movies, these big, huge movies. Not just one writer, you know? You know? Sadly, that just that's not the case. But, hey, it's whatever. But there you go. That's all there was. Like I said. It was a slow news day. So that was the fourth and final topic right there. All right. Let's get to the Twitter questions. See what you guys have to say right there. Over here in the Twitter world. Again, keep on pushing for Jay Leva to come on the Vodka stream. That'd be sweet. Just saying. All right. Let me double check because, you know, the haters, the haters. Never know. You never know. Might post some uh, weird shit in there. I think we're good. Okay. We're good. Here we go. Okay. CK Cooper Knox. Just want to point out that all this uh, DC Comics craziness happened because good old Grace had to tweet out that the flashback, the flashback at the beginning of the year. Is that what happened? We have to bro- we, we blame Grace. Carrie, hey Dave. Well, I appreciate that Jay is saying, and in essence, I agree. I it does dishearten me a little bit. If the Snyder Phantom is looked down that badly in Hollywood, is it still worth hashtagging, or just hope for more Cavill and Ben and leave it at that? Yeah, I mean, luckily they, uh, you know, I mean, all, everything when it comes to nowadays, everything's always looked at negatively. I mean, look at the other fandoms have negative shit too, and they always focus on the negative every time. You know, look at what's happening with Lord of the Rings recently. They always focus on the negative, so they have to do these campaigns that say like, hey, you know, we have, you know, elves of color all over the place. We're fine, you know. How dare you? I stand with the elves of color. I don't I don't know what what's really going on with that. But they always they, they always look at the negative. That's the sad part about humanity nowadays is everybody looks at the negative. You can have 99.6% positive, but that little 0.4% of negative you're going to focus on that more than the positive. That's just the way people are nowadays. It's just the way it is. The way people are, corporation, everything's always, the negative is what always gets the focus, no matter if it's in the minority or not. That's the sad part. Uh, Devon Wooter, hey Dave, did you finish Cobra Kai Season 5 and what's your favorite scene in the Black Adam trailer 2? For me, the action, it seems, uh, reminds me of Man of Steel. Uh, you know, Dr. Fate stuff, obviously. Uh, I haven't finished Cobra Kai yet. Just haven't had time. Just haven't had time to watch it. That's all. Uh, EVM. EVM. One question, sir. One question, please. Do you think Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman would make a cameo in Shazam 2? Apparently she's going to. Do you think Jason Momoa got a tattoo on his head? I'm beginning to think that EVM is a bot. <laughs> An actual bot. Did he get a tattoo on his head? I don't know. I don't know about that, but EVM, one question at a time, and uh, relax with the uh, the gifts that you send me with like everything I post. I'm beginning to think he's a bot. I don't know if that's the case. Maybe he's just a uh, he's just a hype fan. Anyways, man of Steven, I like your name. I always liked your name. And uh, anyways, have you uh, been reading the Black Adam prequel comics? I have not. If not, I would recommend them. They're not very, uh, but they're not very good. I'm very good, I guess. But they have some cool Easter eggs. A really, uh, and really set up the JSA character and Adam's backstory. Okay. Well, I, I want to get both. I want to get the Flash prequel and the, uh, the, uh, and and that one too. So, uh, Asar, Asir. Um, he says, "Hey, Dave. One question. Do you bleed? Yes. Ooh, Warner Brothers. Wow." Warner Brothers Entertainment, they actually put that on their Instagram? That's pretty cool. There you go. Q. Do th- oh, yeah. 
Do things exist only because we look at them? Do things exist only because of the observer? <sighs> Philosophical shit again. Little mind bender. Gustavo, hello Dave. I was watching Zack Snyder's Justice League on Monday and there was bad glitches. Could that be caused by people getting cut? Keep up the great content I watch every day. Well, thank you, Gustavo. Um, and there was bl bad glitches. Could that be caused by people getting cut? I don't think so. It probably just was a bad day of... And this, you know, streaming's always going to have its uh, issues sometimes. I mean, look what happened, you know, servers and whatnot. Andrew Sali, you should check uh, this out sometime. It's amazing. It's every media in existence from Marvel and DC to James Bond to Doctor Who to Star Wars. You name it. Holy shit. And get, oh, yeah. Well, that was probably was that somewhat what what uh, Ben posted. So hey, we got giant apes fighting robotic ninjas. That's quite a name right there. Ninja skills. Giant apes fighting robotic ninjas. I kind of, you know, if, if that's the title of a movie, I'm going to watch it. If I see that in a Netflix library, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. So anyways, guys, so just to round up the week because it is Wednesday. So no Film Junkie Live tomorrow, of course. We've got Vodka Stream on uh, Friday, which we'll talk more about things of the week. And, uh, you know, with the panel and everything and possibly a guest, we'll see. But, uh, yeah, guys, I mean, when it comes to this whole thing and Jay Oliva... What he's pointing out, again, you don't have to you don't have to agree with everything he's saying, you know, you don't. But that doesn't mean you have to like discount him now, like some of these people are. And now they're just like, oh my god, I can't believe this, you know. People saying they're sick to their stomach when they're seeing stuff. He's just he's just telling he's just telling you what he sees. He has a perspective, and he's seeing it. And it's a, it's been a thing that a lot of us have seen. A lot of us have seen some of the stuff when we go like, oh my god, when it comes to certain things, it's like, all right. Um. Yes, there is that vocal minority. There is, just like every fandom has. It's just the way it is. It is the way it is. But, you know, what's different about the Snyder fandom is like, well, we have the Snyder fandom, which, of course, he's going to continue doing movies. But it seems like sometimes when it comes to the, the vocal minority, they're not caring as much about what Snyder's doing now. They just want, obviously, the DC stuff. The DC stuff, the cape shit, the cape shit, the cape shit. So anything new that comes out, even if you like it, the Batman, Aquaman, anything that's coming out, Shazam, whatever, they're just gonna shit all over it and, and look at you for being like, oh yeah, you want people you want you want DC to fail because you support this or you want that. This is whatever the fuck. And then they'll just say all this kind of stuff. I mean I've seen over the years, I've seen people say, you know, send shade to, to Ray Fisher because of what he was trying to do and it was ruining the opportunity of getting Justice League sequels. I mean, I've seen that. Seen that to somebody I've actually met in real life that was part of this fandom that literally said F Ray Fisher because he's ruining the chances for Justice League sequels. That's how gross it could get. It's gotten gross with me, too, even before when the Snyder Cut came out, obviously. But nowadays, it's just like a different kind of ball game. You know, it's like, OK, celebrate the W. Okay, you have a physical copy of the Snyder Cut. You could watch it at any time. Nobody can take that away from you. Nobody can take that away. Okay, no matter where the movies go, nobody can take away. I'm looking at it right now. I have the full on Zack Snyder's Justice League trilogy right there. Man of Steel, BVS, and Zack Snyder. That's like nine and a half hours worth of content right there, worth of beautiful fucking art right there. And that last four hours, guess what? We fought together and got it. Yes, we, you know, bumped heads with each other, but still, it came out and we're all good, okay? Just because now we don't know where everything's going to go and uh, we're not liking some of the directions right there doesn't mean anything. It doesn't take away the friendships that you made. The AFSP donations doesn't take any of that away. doesn't take away that physical copy that you have of the Snyder Cut, okay? And, uh, you know, like I said, when it comes to everything right now, if uh, people are uh, tapping into your emotions for their gain with, uh, you know, with uh, the scoopsy daisies over there that are saying stuff that you like and they end up not being right, I mean, I'm just, we can all just, all we could do is just go like, hey, Pick and choose, pick and choose, but try to be logical when it comes to getting news when it comes to all this shit. You know, hopefully maybe one day we can get Zach to come back after he's done doing what he wants to do. Maybe he can come back and do some more magic when it comes to this universe and even the universe he started. 
Okay. Hopefully one of these days we could do that, but you got to be patient. Just got to be patient for that. Got to be patient. That's all we could do. And right now, what we could do is full on support the man, what he's doing over at Netflix right now. We could still support the man. We could support Jay Oliva for what he's doing over at Netflix too. Hopefully people are not going to be like hashtag, hashtag boycott Jay Oliva, which is ridiculous because he did work on Rebel Moon. Hopefully, I haven't seen that yet, but hopefully we don't see that yet. And hopefully we don't see people just turn just more and more on Jay Oliva because the guy is a talented dude. And uh, I respect his art and uh, would love to have a conversation with him for sure, one-on-one. All right, guys, there we go. That's all I got to say today. Make sure you guys uh, smash that like, thumbs up before you leave. Uh, members, we'll, uh, we'll talk after this. We'll do a post-show stream, so look forward to it. Uh, I'll be, of course, posting the link on your YouTube feed, so look for that. And, um, yeah, everybody else, I'll see you guys Friday. Make sure you smash that like, thumbs up. Before you leave, um, whoop, 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 there we go. Sorry, I had to do that. And uh, make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah, that's about it, guys. Follow me on the Sock Meds, Patreon. It's all right there. I'll talk to you later.